What could you truly become capable of if you were living in greater resonance and synchronicity with your essence? If you were able to be aligning with your divine every day and creating from that energy, are you ready to explore and activate that? Let's get started aligning divine. Now, here's your host, soul and body coach, Keisha Clark. <laughs> Oh my goodness, hello, and wherever you are around this great big world, morning, afternoon, evening, middle of the night, hello and welcome to Aligning Divine here on the Inspired Choices Network or whatever platform you actually may be streaming us through uh, because we have quite a few of them that we can reach you around this great big beautiful world. So however you're landing here and whenever you're landing here, Thank you. If it's your first time landing here on Aligning Divine, oh my goodness, welcome. And um, you might uh, be wondering what the heck Aligning Divine is about. And it is all about having the joy of lining up with your essence and living it every day. Hmm. Yes, it's a slightly unconventional approach to life and living. And that is uh, par for the course with me and the topics that I play with. And I am Keisha Clark. I am a soul embody intuitive and facilitator and another word for that could be coach um, so what does that mean <laughs> that means I facilitate you I support you I work with you and I like to call it playing um, because I do enjoy making work play and play work um, but however the however we do it the target is for you to discover and begin to dis- connect with and make that connection to uh, that authentic you, the true you, the essence of you, and bring that into how you operate and function in the world. Um, I have a different perspective of the being human thing, the spiritual being having a human experience, which, by the way, we're going to be talking about a bit more in just a few minutes. Um, And so the way that I approach things is actually from the limitlessness of the possibilities of you and how you can express on this planet and what um, organically is the way that you showed up to play and create and be on this planet in this lifetime. And yes, I do acknowledge all of those we could call them otherworldly things um, and aspects. So we weave in all of the possibilities and we acknowledge all of the energies. Um, what I find and what I have found and what I have witnessed and experienced for myself um, is that when we can acknowledge the entire <laughs> um, inner, the entire uh, collection, I could say, of energies um, that are involved in who we are and how we function and how we create, Uh, we can actually go a lot further, a lot faster in getting to the what really works for us. And so if you if you know that you did not come here to do what's always been done and be a basically a reproduction of what is already happening on the planet, then this might be the kind of conversation or the kind of show that uh, you want to play with or you might enjoy playing with. And I would imagine if you are that kind of person that you, you've you landed on the Inspired Choices Network because you are a little bit different than the conventional um, structured way of playing on this planet Earth playground. So enjoy. And if you have questions, you can call into the show live. And if you are listening to this as a podcast, you can certainly email me, Keisha at KeishaClark.live. And of course, you can come play on the website, KeishaClark.live. You can also find me on Facebook, KeishaClark.live. And um, however I may be able to support, inspire, facilitate, assist you, I would be honored to get to do that. So What the heck are we playing with today? We are playing with the topic, (laughs) experiencing human. So you heard me say a few minutes ago, I have a different perspective of this thing we call being a spiritual being, having a human experience or as I like to say, experiencing human. And this week, that wanted to be explored a bit more. So in the last few weeks, we've talked about um, 
our our soul essence, um, our soul connection, and really kind of tuning in um, to that for ourselves and just giving ourselves some space to start to get to know what that is for us. And um, so if you've missed, if this is your first time joining and you would like to catch up on those conversations, you can actually find them on my podcast page. You can go into the archives and uh, access all of those shows. And if you would like to find them on your favorite platform or your favorite app, uh, you can just go into your Spotify, your Spreaker, your iHeartRadio, your iTunes, your Apple Podcasts, your Google Podcasts. <laughs> There's a number of apps that you can open up and just search for the show, Aligning Divine, and you'll find those episodes there as well. And that will uh, give you some more things to play with. So we've kind of been leading into – uh, this, it feels like. Uh, I didn't do it on purpose. <laughs> Sometimes we don't have to do it on purpose, do we? Um, so the experiencing human part is kind of where we're at with today's conversation. And we are not, of course, going to ignore <laughs> the soul essence, as you might have imagined. So um, let's just kind of dive right in. So how have you been experiencing human so far? <laughs> have you bought the idea that human, and I'm doing air quotes, is who and what you are, or that human, air quotes again, is some kind of limitation that you are uh, basically at the mercy of, and you just have to kind of ride it out for your time here on this planet Earth playground? Hmm. Did you learn to maintain human as a limitation by the proclamation of being, quote unquote, only human? I hear that quite a bit. I'm only human. I'm only human. And that's always intrigued me. <laughs> so my first question for you would be and is, how is that working for you so far? Yeah. So I, I just want us to be able to dive further into the human experience today. And we could even put that in, in air quotes, the human experience, uh, as though we were going to all experience the same thing, which I think part of part of today's conversation really would like us to acknowledge we don't experience human in the same way. We do have a lot of stories that we tell about it uh, to kind of keep it in place and maintain it. Um, but what is it actually and what can it be for us? And what can it be for our discovery and our awareness of our true power and potency that could actually be far beyond what we have considered human or thought of as human. So interesting word, human. And of course, uh, if you know anything about me, you know I love to play with the energy of words because I love to play with the energy of everything, basically. <laughs> uh, but when we're, when we're playing with the word human, human is... Um, Kind of fascinating because really if you look at the word itself, if you just look at the actual you know, definitions of the word, human is actually an adjective. The word human is actually an adjective in the technical classifications. <laughs> um, and it essentially means of man, uh, which is kind of fascinating. Uh, now, it does come from a combination of some words, uh, and a relationship to some words. But the Latin root of the word human is homo, H-O-M-O, and it essentially means man. Homo, man. Homo, man. There you go. There's human. <laughs> so it's interesting if you look at all of this stuff that we have kind of put onto the word human, when you get right down to it, uh, there you go. <laughs> And if you add the word sapien, or it's actually sapiens, homo sapiens, sapiens is um, translates into wise. So uh, you could say wise man, or literally if you're saying homo sapiens, you're saying man wise. <laughs> um, I don't, however, know that <laughs> that's an automatic classification because I don't know very many of us who function from our wisdom right away. I think, you know, that might be a target we get to. So that's kind of funny to me, but that's just part of my humor. You don't have to appreciate it in the way that I do. Um, so, um, wisdom is something that we kind of have to grow into, I think, in some ways. So it's interesting that 
those two words were put together uh, in a way. And, and of course, they've been around for ages, right? <laughs> and Christine, my producer, and also the station owner and another a sister host here on Inspired Choices Network, she's actually producing my show today. She's uh, in the chat room with me, and she says, something fell through the cracks, yes. <laughs> In in some cases, I do believe that would be totally applicable. Um, so there is this interesting thing we do. You know, if you look at the, what's it called? I think it's called the hierarchy of biological classifications. Um, don't worry, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm just loving to sound a little bit academic here for a moment. Um, <laughs> and that is that the eight uh, major, uh, they're called taxonomics. Uh, taxonomic ranks, and that's where we talk about the species, the genus, the family, the order, the class, the phylum, the kingdom, the do domain, and life. And so um, I was looking uh, at some of this in, in relationship to the, the biology and the anthropology and the such things like that, and I was just really fascinating that, um, you know, the the genus that we are, or, or the family rather, the the genus is Homo. Is, that's H O M O. That's the genus. The family uh, is actually called, and I may not do this justice, but it's it's Hominidae. Uh, now I think that might depend on what country you come from, where you put the accent on the word. So that's fine. Um, but it's in the order of primates, which is really fascinating. And essentially, because the the family, the Hominidae or Hominids, uh, are characterized by uh, opposing thumbs and slightly larger cranial capacity, um, and the ability to how did they put it? Um, the ability to uh, essentially they can figure out slightly more difficult um, problems, or you know they can solve slightly more difficult problems. So I, I guess I think you know most of us probably also fall into that category. <laughs> we could we could pass that particular <laughs> rung on the ladder if you were. So. So if you look at this through scientific or uh, archaeological um, filters or lenses, um, we have all kinds of ways that we classify human um, to essentially be able to speak about it, you know, in a seemingly intelligent way, I, <laughs> I guess, um, and to, to basically have a way that we can explain human in a, a physiological, biological way. Okay, so, so that's great. That's good. It has a purpose. It has an application. Awesome. And does that actually explain you? Does that really give you a sense of, oh, okay, that's feeling, you know, that's feeling like me. That's, that's feeling really... Um, like it resonates, right? I don't know. I don't know about you, but I, I can't say that that's my, uh, that's like the fullness of me. <laughs> it's like that is sort of an explanation from a, from the science of it in a way. That doesn't really quite um, get us into all of the other things that we experience, right? So so what is that? And that's kind of the jumping off point that I wanted to start with today. Um so we can we can know all of those technical things. We can have a our wonderful volumes of explanation, you know, for the the physiological and the biological aspects of of human bodies. And I think it's really interesting that the experience of human has widely and largely become, or really it hasn't become, it's been this for quite some time in our collective history and story, is this kind of um, almost like a sentence that we must serve. <laughs> um, you know, I I look at well, I I do have almost three decades now of of um, body work and um, energy work now in my in my experience, and 
I am still as fascinated today as I was the first day I was in a, a anatomy and physiology class um, and massage class. You know, um, I'm still just as fascinated today by what bodies do and and that we have bodies, right? That we even get to play in these things we call bodies and with these things we call bodies. It They're just really amazing and quite magical. And I am also aware that that is not the popular point of view about bodies. <laughs> um, and in my experience, as a, both in the field of hands-on massage and body work and energetic work with bodies and with, pe- with beings, Um, I have observed that there's a lot of hatred and there's a lot of angst and there's a lot of resentment that is projected at bodies. And um, the reasons, you know, are endless. Um, It could be anything. It could be uh, bodies that aren't shaped correctly, bodies that aren't proportioned correctly, bodies that are not the normal, whether um, bodies are missing fingers or limbs or have a different, you know, what we would call a deformation or a malformation of certain areas of the bodies or certain systems of the bodies. Um, um, the, the different types of pigmentation of bodies, um, different conditions that bodies might have or carry or um, express. There's a myriad of reasons that we've come up with to create this and maintain, really, this um, essentially this resentment of bodies. And we might, some of us might experience that in, um, you know, isolated events, um, such as if we have, you know, a blemish on our face (laughs) or uh, we get a, Uh, an injury, you know, if we have an injury to the body and there's, you know, if if you break your arm, you have a period of time that um, life might get a little more challenging to to maneuver in a physical sense uh, as well as possibly emotional. But at least in the physical sense, you have to function with different consideration of the limb that is is healing, right? Or the, the area that is healing. So, in other cases, it could be lifelong um, or part of your life, you know, that you've had this kind of resentment thing going. I certainly can say that for many years of my life, uh, growing up in the performing arts world, um, hatred of bodies was sort of part of the deal because there was always this continuous judgment being projected as well as perpetrated as well as maintained (laughs) by all of these very interesting rules and parameters about what bodies were supposed to look like and what shape they were supposed to be and how many pounds they were supposed to weigh and what proportion and ratio they were supposed to be. So we have a lot of shit about bodies, which is really fascinating to me, that bodies are the thing that get us the ability to play here (laughs) and we sort of behave as very very poor party guests in many respects um, because we actually spurn our host Um, that that doesn't really make for the most functional uh, or the most pleasant um, process of playing here so what have you noticed and and how have you related to this body that you're with so far and have you made your body the definition of human and that's the first the first kind of um that's one of the first places we look well that's one of the first places i look have you made your body the definition of being human and it would be interesting just if you went if you started and played only there for a while, because so many things that the body could tell us, so many of the energies that our bodies hold on to for us, because we may not 
be really allowing them to transmute the energies. We're just shoving the energies in there and sort of expecting the body to do something with it. But we're not really partnering with our bodies and we're not really allowing our bodies to show us how they might be able to support us to transmute these energies. So these energies are sort of hanging out, whether they're in the fat cells, whether they're in the the collagen cells, whether they're in the mitochondrial cells. It's, it's, it doesn't matter where, really, is my point. We could actually just start with that question right there and have a profound bit of shifting and changing and reconfiguring and transforming of our lives. If you've made your body the definition of being human, that's a lot we can start with right there. So, oh, goodness, as we go to our first break, I just invite you to just sit with this for a moment if you have any desire to do so and notice what you notice. What If you've made your body the definition of being human, whether you've done it consciously or unconsciously, no harm, no foul, just notice. It's just about noticing. You don't, this is not a pass or fail test. <laughs> and so what do you notice about your body if you've made your body the definition of being human? Have you just sort of written it off as, well, I have a body, I'm human. Okay, carry on. <laughs> now what? Or is there something else that we could add to this And that's what I would like to explore when we come back. So take a breath, take a small break. We're going to take one. And uh, you're listening to Aligning Divine here on the Inspired Choices Network. I'm Keisha Clark. I'm so grateful you've come to play. And we'll be back in just a moment. Within each of us, there is a spark of the essence that gives rise to all that is in the universe. Are you ready to let it light up your life? Tune in to Aligning Divine Radio Show with Soul and Body Coach Keisha Clark for fresh perspectives and powerful tools to be aligning with your divine essence and living it every day. Join us for Aligning Divine Radio Show every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, and 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is Aligning Divine Radio Show with soul and body coach Keisha Clark. To bring your question on the show, call in the U.S. 815-880-8255. In Canada, 613-800-8736 or Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. You may also email your questions or comments to Keisha at KeishaClark.live. Now back to the show. <laughs> Welcome back and forward to the next segment of Aligning Divine here on the Inspired Choices Network. Um, you know, I got to say, I'm the featured host this week, by the way. Woohoo! I've enjoyed being the featured host, and I'm thanking Inspired Choices Network for acknowledging me and my show being the featured host this week. Um, I, I, I love that I get to play um, with the amazing creators of Magnitude as my sister host here on... <laughs> the Inspired Choices Network, and I just want to shout out to Christine and Melissa and Rhonda and and our as our production team, which I also have the honor and privilege of being a part of, and Karen, uh, who is our behind the scenes goddess, um, and then each and every host uh, who comes here every week and and just 
opens a space of incredible vulnerability and potency, um, bringing your message to the world and sharing your message with the world. And um, being a, one of the producers, I get to hear these conversations on a, on a regular basis, and I'm amazed. And I am so honored to be a part of this hosting team here as well as the production team here and and just being a part of the network so thank you inspired choices thank you christine mciver and thank you everyone who listens to the inspired choices network and shares these uh shows and and gives us the feedback on the different platforms you know it's uh, it's pretty amazing that we get to do this, and it it truly is global. It truly, you know, it took me a while to kind of wrap my head around that. But you you hear me in Lithuania, <laughs> you can hear me in Japan, you can hear me in Wales and in the UK, and you can hear us all over the world. And I love that a good number of people that I call dear friends, I've not even met them in person yet. Um, I've met them online, and I've, some I've met through this show, and some I've met through other shows that I work on. Um, but it's just, it's truly amazing that we can do this. And how cool that this gets to be part of our experiencing human, in a way. Um, but I'm I'm just amazed that we can do this and, and how we can do this. And so thank you all for choosing to expand your world and to be inspired and to be an inspiration in the world. So um, just a little moment there. Warm fuzzy. Okay. (laughs) Uh, Virtual warm fuzzies. I love that. Okay. So um, diving back into the conversation of experiencing human, um, yeah, we do this really interesting thing that as we were talking about in the first segment, you know, a lot of times we just, we make the body the kind of definition and meaning of being human. And yet, what are you aware of? (laughs) Is that the summation of who you are? And does that determine who you are? And does that limit who you can be? Aha. And this is where it gets really fascinating for me. Um, we do this funny thing with the word human and really with the word man, you know, as in the collective man, not specifically gender related, but um, with the word man, uh, as in mankind, as in human beings, um, it's this really interesting thing that human or man or mankind, it's kind of been relegated to this lower class kind of word, in the hierarchy of words because it's it's considered lowly in many respects by a lot of people. Oh, it's just the human thing. Human is like low man on the, the totem pole of life and evolution and blah, blah, blah. And so what is up with that? <laughs> now, I got to tell you, it makes for some very great uh, and very powerful marketing and very effective marketing. Because if we're so busy looking at what's wrong with our bodies, if we have allowed our bodies to be, or if we've made our bodies the definition of human and who we are and all that we can be, then certainly it's really effective as a marketing tool uh, to create this interesting propaganda about bodies being so limited and so uh, incapable and so easily damaged and if we say that our brains can be easily malfunctioning and that our mind is a terrible thing, we can certainly uh, bring in a lot of different options for how not fun experiencing human might be. So, oh gosh, what have you bought as quote-unquote the human experience? And what are you aware that it could be for you? That's where I love to play. Because really, where I've gotten, where I have arrived at at this point in my life, I've I've heard many different philosophies. And I'm fascinated by a lot of the 
we could call it the body bashing and the the mind bashing that goes on, you know. But you know what? Let me just ask you a question. Is it your body's job <laughs> to create your life? Uh hmm. Just give that a little bit of consideration there. And let me ask you another question. Is it your mind's job to create your life? Hmm. What do you get? <laughs> I can feel some virtual puppy dog's heads kind of images. <laughs> right? So for me, it's not my body's job to create my life. That wasn't the deal. Right? Like that was not the arrangement. And it is not my mind's job to create my life. Nor is it my mind's job or my body's job to keep me on the right path, quote unquote, or so to speak. It's not their job. So if I suspend my investment or my my attachment or my significance around my body and my mind should do dot 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 or should be dot 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 and I'm you can fill in the blank with whatever you want. If I suspend that for just a few moments, what else is actually there for me to notice? What else could I actually become more aware of? What do you notice? See, all of these stories that we have about limitation, I've kind of reached the point where it's it's rather irritating to me to hear people talk about only human. I'm only human. That's a great excuse. But that it does nothing in the way of advancing you forward in your growth process, right? Do you get that? Only human. The word only, for one, that's kind of a big red flag, right? I'm only human. Well, what if human was just so much more that the word only is like no longer even appropriate to use there, right? What do you start to notice? What do you start to notice in your world as we're talking about this? And I, this conversation, it, it feels like it really is, well, let me put it this way. I get the sense that bodies, the consciousness of bodies and the consciousness of our planet, they really are desiring us to step up in our own lives and acknowledge this experience that is and can be so much more than uh, a sentence we have to carry out. Now, here's another interesting piece about the root of the word or the etymology of the word human. The Proto-Indo-European root, now this is, I have no hardcore science, but I'm not necessarily a hardcore science kind of gal. I'm just, I follow the energy, so we're going to add this in, all right? So the Proto-Indo-European root, yes, it took me forever to be able to pronounce that (laughs) or say that, so I'm just, I'm kind of happy I can say it because it really sounds very smart, doesn't it? Um, But the root, this, this root of the, that is a part of the word human which is, it's spelled very differently, and I don't think I can do the pronunciation any justice, but it's it's a very interesting collection of uh, letters, and it is, um, let me see if I can find it here, I want to say it's something like uh, nem or gem. Now, this is different from human, but this is part of where human came from, the word human. But guess what the the word actually literally means? And I'll spell it out for you. The the Proto-Indo-European root. (laughs) It's spelled D-H-G-H-E-M. At least that's the English spelling that we can get the closest to it. It literally translates to earth. 
Hello. Knock, knock. Earth calling. <laughs> Bodies calling. Hello. Earth. It literally translates to earth. Now, here's an interesting thing. When you, if you were to look that up, literally it means earth. So, so a part of the application of the word human has to do with earthling, being of the earth. Okay, so we have bodies. <laughs> we have a planet. We get to come here and be hosted by bodies on this amazing planet, and I like to say planet Earth playground. What if this amazing planet and our souls have this game we play that we get to bring our consciousness into form and matter to experience the possibilities of creation? Hello. <laughs> Hello. Did we just start to blow the lid off of the paradigm? Yeah. Off of the teeny tiny box that we've called human. Oh my gosh. What if this amazing earth and our souls, and you could look at it as even our collection of souls, right? Source creation, source creator. What if we actually have this arrangement or even an agreement with the earth that we get to bring our consciousness into form and matter to experience creation, to experience being creators, what if that is how we could experience human? I know, it's radical. I know. I know, it's radical. <laughs> and yet, what if? What if, my friends? And what do you know about this that you have not even begun to tap on the door of? I am inviting you and enthusiastically encouraging you to play with this for you. What do you actually get a sense of? What do you actually know about this? I am not necessarily what you would call a betting woman or a betting person. And if I was, I would place some pretty good money <laughs> on this that you actually know a heck of a lot more than you've even started to play with, than you've even considered playing with in this lifetime. Or any lifetime, maybe. Who knows? Have you gone beyond that threshold? Have you been willing to go beyond that threshold? And would you be willing to do that now, in this life? Would you be willing to have your awareness of the so much more that is actually available and possible in experiencing human and to experience human. Yes. You see, there is all of this that comes through our brain and our body and our mind and our the, the physical expression. And Lularu is chiming in on this. Thank you, darling. There is all of that and what else could we add? What else could we include? How much more of us could we be willing to bring into this experience? And what could we allow this experience, how much more of us could we allow this experience to facilitate us discovering? I know, it's kind of mind-blowing. And that's a good thing. <laughs> so I'm just going to let us kind of sit in this for a moment. 
let's take another little break here and take a breath and just let this spin you around for a little while. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot here to, as we say, unpack, if you will, or blow it up. You don't have to unpack it. You just blow it up and start fresh. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> So, oh my goodness, I love these conversations. <laughs> I geek out to this. So thank you for coming to play with <laughs> something that I absolutely adore. And I genuinely, deeply desire that you also are receiving a nudge from this or through this or in this. Uh, and that nudge is is your life asking you to move even more into the space of you, to the energy of you, to the possibilities of you, in the way that you organically came here to do and be and play and create. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, my darlings, keep breathing. (laughs) We're going to keep aligning with our divine here on the Inspired Choices Network, and we'll be back in just a moment. (laughs) Within each of us, there is a spark of the essence that gives rise to all that is in the universe. Are you ready to let it light up your life? Tune in to Aligning Divine Radio Show with Soul and Body Coach Keisha Clark for fresh perspectives and powerful tools to be aligning with your divine essence and living it every day. Join us for Aligning Divine Radio Show every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, and 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is Aligning Divine Radio Show with soul and body coach Keisha Clark. To bring your question on the show, call in the U.S. 815-880-8255. In Canada, 613-800-8736 or Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. You may also email your questions or comments to Keisha at KeishaClark.live. Now back to the show. (laughs) Welcome back and forward, my beautiful friends, (laughs) to the next segment of Aligning Divine. Here on the Inspired Choices Network, I'm Keisha Clark. I'm so grateful you are playing with me in this conversation today. And I'm so grateful you're bringing you to the conversation. Um, You know, you are contributing to this conversation, to these conversations, just by choosing to play with them. So thank you for that. And thank you for showing up on this Planet Earth playground. And I wonder... What else could you be playing with? What else did you come here to play with and to create? And wow. So experiencing human, all those stories, all those wonderful stories, um, it feels like next it kind of wants to go to just clarifying a few things. And one of those things is, all of the ways that we've made human something separate from us, human and spirit, that we've separated them. Um, Ironically, (laughs) when we're here with a body, uh, we're not separated. We're actually together. (laughs) Now, that could be in varying degrees of togetherness, depending on, you know, what point of our life we're at or what's going on in our life, even. Uh, When, certainly, when there is, intense trauma um, or pain or even, you know, what we might call catastrophe, um, certainly there is varying degrees of that connection. And sometimes that could be because of emotional uh, experiences and sometimes that can be because in some cases there is damage done to the body that is to such a degree that it can no longer sustain the connection with that spirit. So, So, yes, there are varying degrees. You could say that connection, uh, the strength of the connection, it fluctuates as we go through our life experience. And yet, 
that does not mean that we cannot receive the contribution of the experience. And this is the this is a big part that that I notice, and I notice it for me, and I also notice it in in pretty much everyone I get to work and play with. Is we're we're not. Hmm, how do I say this? We tend to not allow ourselves to actually experience this life. We tend to do these interesting things that we do. We create habits and behaviors that are based on various and sundry beliefs and points of view um, that actually, in many cases, prevent us or limit us in the experiencing. So what what one thing could you play with today or this week or this month that would actually shift that for you? And where I'm going to invite you to start is by looking at what you have bought into about human. So it kind of brings us full circle into the, the question that I started with. Have you made your body the definition of being human? Have you made it the limitation of human? And then we can add to that. Have you made human a limitation? Have you made human a second class possibility in your life or of your life? And if you're functioning from that consciously or unconsciously, and I will tell you, Many in many cases, we're functioning from something unconsciously and it's having way more impact and influence on our lives than what we're acknowledging. But if you're, if you're functioning from that in any way, it is creating limitation in your life. It is creating limitation with your body. It is creating limitation in what you can create and what you can experience. Yeah. <laughs> and it is completely changeable. It is completely changeable. Not through effort and hard work as much as it is changeable through shifting your perspective. So we could say the human experience is what you make it. What do you desire your experience of human to be? What do you desire your connection of your spirit with this planet Earth playground through a physical body and with an an open mind? What do you desire that to be? Do you desire that to be a limitation? Do you desire it to reinforce all the stories of limiting and limitation? Or do you desire it to be the adventure that gives you a greater sense of you? Do you desire it to be the process of growing into the fullness of of your spirit, the fullness of your soul. What if that is completely possible? We talk about human development and spiritual growth. And I will just ask you, does your spirit need to grow? (laughs) And the reason, well, part of where this question comes from is I hear spiritual growth used a lot. And I get what people are intending when they're saying that. However, is it your spirit that actually needs to grow? Or is your spirit infinite? Is it you that needs to allow yourself to grow into the vastness of who you truly are? 
And what if we come here to play and to experience human, to experience our connection with the earth as a most brilliant and beautiful way of experiencing growing into, consciously growing into the more of us, becoming aware of and exploring and experimenting and experiencing the more that is possible. I mean, really, holy wow, guys, this is, this is very different. And does this feel like so much bigger and so much yummier? I know it does to me when I, when I go to this place, when I get here, when I see this, when I have these awarenesses or these aha moments, when my life is showing me, when the universe is showing me <laughs> or reminding me of this, right? It's enormous to me. And it's so exciting. It is so invigorating when I can play with it in this way. And it feels like so much more is actually available and possible. Because I'm taking the limitations off the table. I'm asking my body and my and the earth and my mind. I am saying, okay, let's go beyond what we've played with so far and how we've played so far, right? Let's turn it up. Let's blast it open. So how could we be experiencing human moving forward? And what could we allow it to contribute to us? If human were no longer something that showed us limitation, what if we started asking it to show us the limitlessness? What if we started asking it to show us how it can contribute to us? What if we started asking what more could we be willing to receive? What more could we actually receive in the experiencing and through the experiencing of human? And what is human for us? And what is desiring our attention right now? What if we could absolutely shift how we function and where we function from? And that could allow us to create something completely different in our lives, with our bodies. And yes, you know that ripples out into the universe. You know that that creates dynamic shifting and changing in the whole of the universe. And is that part of what we came here to bring in? Did we come here to shift this paradigm? Did we come here to bring these new possibilities into our awareness and into our existence? And would you be willing to be that? Yeah. So, my beautiful, amazing, magical friend... Ah, oh, would you allow yourself to experience human in a completely new and amazing way now? And I just invite you to do it your way because this is about lining up with your essence and living it every day. So until next week, ah, oh, enjoy the experience. <laughs> oh, goodness. Thank you for listening to Aligning Divine Radio Show. Keisha Clark has more to share next Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, and 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. And for now, she is cheering you on to create an awesome week of lining up with your essence and living it.